Uh, chapter 5, Discrete Probability Distributions. So we're going to be covering this uh, chapter for two weeks. So I'm going to do half of this um, presentation now and then half again next week. Um, that's how we can get you know a little bit more information and we're going to work on stuff. So we, as we notice, we have discrete probability distributions. Now we're really interested in discrete values. So what are discrete values? Discrete values, remember, are counting numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. Okay. Versus continuous values, which have fractional parts to them. You know, 1.361, uh, 2.589, and so on and so on. Why are we interested in discrete versus continuous? Well, discrete happens in real life. We count things. Okay. And so that's why we're really interested in what is happening in the discrete um, probabilities. So, when we have that, we have to have a random variable. Now, it's not necessarily a random variable as we're just pulling numbers out of the air, but we're asking questions. You know, how many cell phones do you have? Well, I have two. I've had many, but right now I have two. Um, and so on. You know, so what is your age? 36. What is your height? You know, 5 foot 10. We're asking people questions. They're giving us an answer. These are going to be random answers, you know, to our group. And that's the random variable that we're getting. Now, when we're done with these, we're going to make a distribution. Okay. A distribution is just a um, sheet of all of our counts and then the probabilities of getting those counts that we've had. Okay. Now, there's two rules for a probability distribution. The first is that all the probabilities added up have to equal 1. And the second is that the probability, each individual probability has to be between 0 and 1. Now, in a lot of cases, we will show that a probability has... Um, we won't count it because we didn't get any, but if we find that a probability has a minuscule chance of occurring, we don't want to put zero because that falsely assumes that it has no chance of occurring. Because remember, zero has no chance of occurring, and one is a definite. But so if we have a minuscule amount, we might see, you might see a zero plus, as I mentioned in the book, and so that's just something to be aware of. Now, when we deal with these probability distributions, we're going to create formulas. Okay we'll use them for certain things as we go along and the formulas are the same ones we were used before we have the mean as you can see here the mean is the sum of the x's times the probabilities okay frequency distribution same thing here then we have our variance which is we take our x we subtract off the mean we square it multiply it by the probability and add all those up and then to kind find our standard deviation, we can take the square root of that. Or we can do x squared times the probability of x minus mu squared. This is what our computer and our calculators do. It's easier um, and thus the reason it's done. And then we take the square root of it. You know, And as you can see from the previous one, if we square both sides, we get our variation again. So now when we're done that, we have kind of all chunky information stuff, but one of the things we do get out of that that's very important is the expected value. And the expected value is the same as the mean. Okay. Now we use this in decision theory, and they talk about this on page um, 212 and 213, where they're asking, well, which is a better bet? A $5 bet on the seven in a row roulette wheel or the five dollar pass line in craps and they calculate how much are you expected to win or in since it's a casino lose um, in each case and you take the higher value so as you can see uh, in the solution they've added up the losses of five dollars and um, you, you're going to lose thirty seven out of thirty eight times and you're going to gain $175, but that's only going to occur one out of 38 times. And so they've added up the two values, and they find that you lose 26 cents in the roulette mail overall in the long run. Whereas on uh, craps, you actually lose only 8 cents. So you're better off playing craps than you are roulette if you're going to pit on a single number. And that's the expected value. 
Now we also have unusual results that are going to occur and those are similar to what we've had um, with regular numbers where we have the mean plus or minus two standard deviations. Anything outside of that two standard deviation area is still an unusual value. Okay, And that's really all there is in chapter 5.2. Now we're going to look quickly at 5.3 which is binomial distributions and then we're going to stop and we'll cover some more stuff next week. So a binomial distribution is again a discrete distribution except for the fact that there are two chances of things happening. You have success and failure. There's a fixed number of trials the trials are all independent, so if I take something out, it's, you know, it doesn't depend on the last one. Uh, there's only two possible outcomes, success and failure, and the probability of success is always the same. So when they say a fixed number of trials, I'm going to look at 150 widgets that come across the conveyor belt and see if they weigh the right amount. Okay? They should all be, the weights are all don't depend on matter when they occur. So there's the trials are independent. I can either have the right weight or the wrong weight. You know, I can have the uh, and my success is going to be the same. It's a you know 20 percent chance of success, a 90 percent chance of success on every time. The success rate is exactly the same. So what do we do with these? Well. We have our formulas again. These are important. The probability of success is P. <laughs> the probability of failure is 1 minus P, or Q. Um, the number of trials is going to be our N. Uh, the number of successes is what we're looking for. Those are the X's. So the probability of getting exactly X number of successes is P of X. So because you know sometimes we want to look to see at least that many, sometimes we also want to see less than that many, sometimes we want to see more than that many, you know, but the probability of getting three successes out of five is that number. And so those are the things you're going to see written down. And I'll show you some of those as we go along. Now, the nice thing about the binomial distribution is that the formulas are really easy. Our mean is n times v. So the number of trials times the probability of success. The variance is the number of trials times the probability of success times the probability of failure. And our standard deviation is n times v times q square rooted. So those are very nice simple formulas to use and you know we can go in and uh, I can see how the things are built by using the factorials on page 221 but you know we're gonna you know skip that and um, just assume that they're correct and then they actually the nice the nice people in the book publishing uh, give us um, lists of values in appendix A. Um, there's also, you know, mini tab or the calculator that we can use to calculate these, and we'll show you how to do some of those um, in class on Saturday. So, uh, for